Greetings, faithful followers. This is your old pal, Brother Jack Angry, and along with uh, Dahlia, the Black Dahlia here, uh, our sexy male girl, and welcome to another edition of the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama or Movie Night Live from the Monastery of Mayhem. First off, let's uh, get a few uh, let's get a few bits of business out of the way, shall we? Um, I do want to let everyone know we've been picked up by no less than four stations through uh, through our Peg Media connections. Uh, we've been picked up by a stage. Uh, a uh, public access station in Sandfield, Maine. We have been picked up by one in Gary, Indiana, one in White Rose, Pennsylvania, and one in Georgia. I don't have the call letters at the moment here, but you know, if you're living in those area, in any of those areas, uh, you and we're going to be reaching a, a combined marketplace of over 500,000 households. So you're going to get to see us all across the country. Well, it's, it's looking that way. In addition to, uh, we're, I've been in touch with the, uh, the owners and producers of the Grindhouse channels. They're still going to be running our shows. It's just they've had some technical difficulties and are waiting for some uh, replacement equipment before they can get us up and on there. But don't worry, fans. We will be there shortly. And we'll keep you posted on that through the, uh, the website, the Facebook, and the usual channels. Um, so we want to say thank you to all of our friends at Peg Media. Uh, we want to say thank you to the Grindhouse channel. Also, you can uh, look for us. We'll be shooting a segment shortly from uh, the Davy, Daisy Jones Locker, the uh, Omaha Rockabilly clothing store. It is located in Benson. I believe it's located like right next to Zombie Glass. Nice. So, yeah, it's like... You got a head shop on one side, a rockabilly clothing store on the other, and we're right in the middle of it. Gee, right. how, how does that how does that work? You know, <laughs> perfectly. But, yes, it does. <laughs> and you certainly do look lovely. I forgot how tall you are in those heels. I'm, yeah. I'm between you and Inferno. I'm starting to feel like a fucking munchkin over here. <laughs> You gotta get your own set of heels. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> uh, I don't know, I never had much luck with heels. I may have to get a set of those big Frankenstein boots and that way I can stomp around in nice. them, you know. <laughs> Good for flattening small field mice. <laughs> Village stomping boots. There you go, it's like, hey, I need all the help I can get, you know. I'm starting to feel a little inadequate around all you Amazons, you know. <laughs> but anyway, tonight's film, we've got a real treat for you all. We're bringing you the 1975 TV movie classic, Trilogy of Terror. Now this one really needs no real introduction, but I'm gonna give you a little brief history of the film. And first off, it stars Karen Black. So she recently passed, uh, I believe, uh, at the at like last fall, she passed on about, I believe, to Christmas time. And you know, uh, really, really great actress. She's done a lot of wonderful stuff. She's done. That's my phone. That's all right. We're just gonna let that go to voicemail. It's like okay. I thought. I thought our phone service was cut off. It's like how the hell does that work? <laughs> Damn bill collectors. Anyway, well, you know what we say. Fuck 'em. Catch us if you can. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, it's, yes, it's like oh, we'll we'll let it ring. You know, good, they stopped. Well, screw that. Let's them. not be important. No. Remember, kiddies, if you're going to reach Brother Jack by phone, you got to let that thing ring because I don't answer the phone very often. If I don't know your number, I ain't talking to you. <laughs> anyway, that explains why I don't talk much to my family, you know. I know their numbers, but yet I ignore them. But anyway, Karen Black was a great actress. She did the Trilogy of Terror. She did Nashville. She did one of the airplane, um, uh, one of the uh, air, airplane, the great disaster films by Irwin Allen. She played a stewardess in that. Um, really, really huge volume of work, a career that spanned decades. Um, she passed uh, back around Christmas time from, I believe, pan pancreatic or ovarian cancer, some form of cancer, which is sad because we've lost so much great talent to cancer, depression, medical stupidity, you know. Uh, Butchery. It, yeah, exactly. It's just been really, this has been a really hard year on the celebrity, on the celebrity community. Some of the best and brightest have gone on, have passed on, and 
you know, the world is a lot sadder and a lot less funny place for it. I mean, that's why it's up to people like us, like me and my fellow horror hosts, <coughs> except for red-headed hacks. <coughs> Where'd that, gee, better get that cough looked at. <coughs> Suck it, you lab coat wearing creep. <coughs> anyway, um, damn cough, I'll have to get that looked at. Go buy, I'll go buy some cough syrup after this is over. It is flu season. Yes, it is. Well, no, it's Ebola season. Oh, that's yes, what I'm that's worried right. about. And where are they bringing them all? Right here, right, people. Right here, because we've got the, uh, the chambers for it. Yeah, well, it's like... You know, let's not let that fact get around. We'll be up to our necks in the sick people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sorry. I'm a firm believer in Darwinism. You know, the weak and the stupid will die first. Hopefully. Yes. They it's like, quit breeding for well, a minute. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the only thing we can do with any really great, uh, really, uh, really gr uh, great aptitude is eat, drink, and screw. You know, yep, make the rest. More it's of making them. yeah, it's making the rest of us look bad. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I know, they're bringing Ebola right to the center of the country, you know, and I, I'm telling you, the next step is going to be the zombie apocalypse. We're going to turn up, get up, get ready to have our Wheaties in the morning. We're going to flip on the old TV, and pretty soon the headline, The Dead Walk, will be flashing on the screen. And you know what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be holding my mug of coffee in one hand and my f cereal spoon in the other, and I'm going to be going, Ah, fuck! <laughs> Gouging them out, eyeballs first. <laughs> well, it's like no, it's like pack the car up. We're going, we're going to, we're going to the mountains, people. We'll we'll hide in Iowa. They won't go there. You know, if the hookers don't get them, the meth heads will. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, it, that's so so right. So right, yes. But am I? It's it's wrong on so many levels, but is it not truthful? It's very truthful. Yes, it's, <laughs> uh, zombies, like see some zombie biting a meth head and then two hours later he's sitting he's there doing zombie. this. Yeah, you know, twitching like, too much to go after somebody else. <laughs> I'm tweaking, man! I need my fix! I'm Jonesing! Oh, no. <laughs> you know, we'll just wait till they're all Jonesing and then we'll throw Funyuns at him and then we'll, be, oh. we'll all be able to run away. <laughs> But the so trilogy, of, okay, that's, well, that's enough fun at Council Bluffs expenses. We can sit here and do that all day, and believe me, we have on many occasions. Now, the Trilogy of Terror uh, is based on, as hence the title, is three separate stories. The first story involves a Karen Black as a mousy uh, English teacher slash librarian slash nebbish who uses witchcraft, the dark, and the dark arts to lure hot young college guys to her bed where she enslaves them and then creates a series of dysfunctional relationships after which she promptly kills them. You know, it's like, does that sound any different than women in real life? I was going to say, that sounds like my kind of movie. Yeah, it's like, I mean, Karen Black was hot as the, as the librarian look, I mean, you know, that kind of does it for old, that kind of does it for old brother Jack, you know, it kind of gets, you know, kind of gets the little, the little soldier up and saluting as it were, but, you know, it's like, don't like the way it works out, you know, it like, like nowadays, I mean, if it had been in today's society, she would have, uh, bobbited them, you know, huh? you know, they would have stuck her in jail for fucking youngins. Yeah, it's like, well, that's it, you know, it's like she would have been on Todd and Tyler, MILF teacher bags another student, film at 11. <laughs> film at 11, that's high. Yeah, it's like, and speaking of Todd and Tyler, I'm sure we all saw their page on Facebook, uh, with pictures of these two teachers. Now, I'm sorry, friends, uh, friends and faithful followers, if you're a 16-year-old guy and you just got done having a freaky circus-type sex three-way with your two hot teachers, wouldn't it be, wouldn't the first thought in your head is, maybe I better keep my friggin' mouth shut because I don't want this to go away? But no, what do you do? What does he do? He tells his best friend. Oh, and no. your best friend, um, okay, guys, pay attention. Let me hip you to this. Best friends are cock blockers, okay? If your best friend is a dude, he will block you because he's trying to get with that himself and he's going to do it by stepping on you. So if you're having this kind of action, if you're doing the, and we don't advocate, um, we don't advocate anybody under the age of consent having any sort of relationship, sexual or otherwise, with an older woman. Or unless, 
Unless you're videotaping it. Uh -huh. And then you're sending those tapes to me. And we'll put that address up at the end of the show. You know, but keep it, keep, keep it respectful, guys. No ugly women. We don't want no. no ugly women. No fat women. Only thin hotties. Yeah, well, it, at, we're going HWP on this one, but although I have met some girls who were uh, on the uh, thick side, thick and fluffy does work sometimes. But that's enough of that shit. Alright, so anyway, we're going to get back to Trilogy of Terror, starring Karen Black, here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shako Rama. Enjoy. Alright. Yeah, it's like... Um, yeah, I couldn't believe that when I saw that on Facebook. I mean, you know, two hot, two hot teachers railing a 16-year-old, and what does he do? He starts blowing his mouth off. I'm, th I'm wow. thinking, I'm screaming at the radio. What are you doing? Right, because now those chicks are going to go to jail. He's They're going to jail career. for, and he's basically been ostracized as a deviant, and he ain't yeah. even a victim. He's a deviant, you know. Yeah. So basically, way to go, kid, you know. <laughs> Two, three hundred years ago, a 16-year-old kid was considered a full-grown adult. In so many cases, if you're, in, if you're in Arkansas, they still do, you know. It's like, that's why there's so many Uncle Daddies running out there Uncle that are still Daddies. on that high school football team, you know. It's like, remember, if you, you something's wrong, if your family tree don't fork, if it goes straight up, You've got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> the family bamboo. Oh, man. It's like, wait a minute, looking at our family tree, where are the branches? There are no branches. It all goes straight up and down. It's bamboo, for God's sakes. One set of gene pool. Uh, yeah, it's like that gene pool needs some chlorine, let me tell you. <laughs>
Well, greetings, faithful followers. Welcome back. What do you think of Trilogy of Terror so far? What did you think of that first episode? Karen Black is the mousy little school teacher using the witchcraft and everything to bag all these hot young guys, and then she kills them. You know, it's like kind of takes that whole Black Widow thing to a whole new level. Like a praying mantis in yeah, human it's, form. Yeah, it's like... And, the only difference between women and praying mantis is the wrong head gets eaten during sex. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, they don't bite your head off, and if you're lucky, they won't bite the other one off either, but hey, I make no promises. You know, <laughs> Brother Jack's always leery about that. It's like, I want to come in, I want to leave with everything that I came in with, you know? Fully attached. That's right. Hey, Billy Bob, you okay? <laughs> Great. All right, hey, another clean escape. Oh my gosh, that's good stuff. The second episode of the uh, Trilogy of Terror has Karen Black playing a housewife slash mother trapped in a in her home being stalked by a slasher type killer and her subsequent efforts to, uh, to get away from him. Uh, that one was... Basically, we started out on a high note with the first episode. This one is kind of just tails off just a little bit. It kind of gives us a chance to slow down, catch our breath. We're all going, yeah, okay, slasher film. Slasher, you know, it's like, don't hide in the fucking closet. You know, we all, we've all been there. We all know the drill. And it's like, oh, he's going to be the next one to get killed. You know, that's kind of that kind of episode. But not bad nonetheless. Um, the third one is the one I really want to talk about. Uh, and I'm going to just briefly start cover this, and then we're going to go back to the movie, and we'll cover it more on the break. The Zuni fetish doll. Now, this is an iconic piece of chase-slash-suspense terror. Uh, and we all know the plot, but in case you've been living under a rock or in Council Bluff somewhere, <laughs> um, you know, in that case, you're living under a pile of uh, meth cooking equipment. <laughs> Oh, threw in the oh, drop the meth card two times, Jack. What are you looking for material? Hell yes, uh, Jack's always looking for material. Um, they don't give you these just because of your good looks. All right, the um, the Zuni fetish doll. Karen Black plays the wife of an archaeologist who re who acquires a ceremonial Zuni fetish doll from the Amazon rainforest. Now this is a little doll about yay high, you know carved in a very fearsome face, big sharp teeth, you know, got a little spear, and he's also got a little golden chain around, wrapped around his waist, tied with a ceremonial knot. Um, she has a, a piece of paper that with, comes with the doll, saying that, you know, if this chain is cut, the doll could come to life. It's a religious fetish object. So don't you think that this doll might be a little dangerous? But no! Our heroine, what does she do? She cuts the chain! You know, it's like, that's like saying, ooh, I'm sitting here in a room full of gunpowder. Let me just fire up this bong and see what happens. Right. You'll smoke yourself into the great beyond. And that's pretty much what she does. She's, uh, I don't want to give it away, but this is one of the greatest scenes of sus suspense, chase, and horror that has ever been produced. This film made Karen Black's career because at this when this was filmed in the early 70s she'd come off a few minor roles she after the trilogy of terror she was cast in several of the airplane movies I believe the airport series the airport 77 I believe where she played the stewardess who has to fly the plane in after the pilot subsequently drops dead from eating bad fish or a heart attack or Sticks his dick in an electric socket. Who knows? Some it damn thing. It was the 70s. It was the 70s. Hey, they did that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know? But anyway, she's the one that's sitting there on the radio with the control tower. I don't know how to fly this plane! But yet her hair looks perfect. You know? It was the 70s after Right? All. Helmet heads everywhere. There you go. The hair. Men had the hair helmet and women had the big hair. Yep. You know? It's like... Although... For those of us, you know, big hair equals power steering. So just remember that, guys. Yeah, brother Buddy's waving his paw at us. Hi, Buddy! Yeah, right. I was just... He's sitting there, get me the fuck out of here! I can't take these bad jokes anymore! I think my ears are bleeding! Oh my 
god, I've never seen a cat's paw do that. Yeah, he's just waving. Our other cat, Brother Kramer, used to do that too. They, uh -huh. If you were on the toilet and had the door shut, he'd stick his paw under the door and wave it at you, uh -huh. saying, what are you doing? I don't like closed doors. Uh -huh. You know, so he'd come in there and you'd open it, he'd come in the door and sit there and look at you like, what the hell are you doing, you know? Uh -huh. That's a weird look. What's up with that? You okay? <laughs> but anyway, and remember, friends and faithful followers, if you can, at this time of the year, the ASP, your local Humane Society shelters and your local ASPCA are having great deals on adopting one of these furry little guys, uh, puppies too, so go down, check them out. It's the best money you're ever going to spend. It's the only kind of love that money truly can buy, and at least you don't have to go to Craigslist for it. Yep. And you're saving little puppy and, and you're, yeah, you're saving. You're saying you're you're gonna be a be, be their superhero, friends. Save save them, and that way you can be their hero 24/7, 365 days a year. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna get back to the trilogy of terror, starring Karen Black here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. Enjoy. All right. Well, greetings, faithful followers. Uh, I'm welcome back. I'm Brother Jack Angry along with Black Dahlia here. What did you think of the conclusion of Trilogy of Terror with Karen Black? The Zuni fetish doll. Wasn't that just freaking great? Sounds pretty sweet. It does. I mean, when he, the little doll is chasing her all over the house, you know, and he's stabbing her with the little spear, and then she gets the little spear away from him, and she's sitting there looking at it, and it looks like a little, just a little needle with a little point on it. I mean, but I guess that could do some pretty, pretty heavy damage if she, he hits you in the right place. And then the little bastard gets a carving knife, oh. and he's chasing her through the house, going, ah, this little carving knife, nice. like he's a little member of ISIS or something. Huh? You know, I'm surprised they didn't oh, put him in a tur robe and a turban, you know? Uh, you know, have a little bomb strapped to his chest oh or something, gosh. you know? And he's just chasing her through the house doing this and, you know, nye, nye, nye. and then when she burns him up and throws him into the oven and burns him up, what does she do? She's sitting there watching him burn and the little wooden doll is burned to a little pile of ash and you can see all this demonic energy just floating around in the oven. What does our, what does, what does our Mensa candidate do? She opens the door and sticks her head inside. And at the end, you see her sitting there squatting in front of the oven, wearing her little, her little robe, you know, and I'm surprised, you know, it's like they didn't give, they didn't say that was the first 70s beaver shot. But anyway, she's sitting there with her little robe with the carving knife, you know, stabbing it on the floor. And then she smiles and she's got a mouthful of these big sharp fangs like the Zuni fetish doll. And her eyes look like the Zuni fetish doll. So she's been possessed by the whatever evil spirits inside the doll. It's now got a hold of her and she's gonna she called her mother over and she, she said she had a surprise for her. Well yeah, it's like here's mom's surprise, you know. A 36 inch carving knife anima. You know, oh. it's like that ain't gonna be pretty. That's making my butt hurt. Just yeah, thinking. it's like yeah, a lot of guys in the audience, <laughs> a lot of people in the audience were going, ooh. Right. You know, you can hear the sound. Whoa, what's that noise? Oh. The sound of sphincters going shut all across the theater. Oh. You know, it sounds like steam. <laughs> you know, it sounds like vacuum, you know. Steam coming out of people's bums. But anyway, you know, so she had, that was another part of the film, that she did have issues with her mother. Her mother constantly nagged her and bothered her and all of this other stuff. Um, so we all know what's going to happen to mom when she gets over there, and that ain't going to be pretty, but hey, that would have been another great movie, you know, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. But anyway, um, so that was the Trilogy of Terror, a really great piece of filmmaking starring a really great actress, and it was one of those where everything just came together. It was almost the perfect storm of horror, suspense, um, Monsters, you know, you had the little doll running around, you know, doing this and all that, and um, great, great movie. Um, but Dahlia, I understand that you've you've managed to have a little good luck this week. You yeah. You were able. You were out looking for a job and you got hired, right? Yeah, at Goodwill. I'm a, I'm going to be a cashier. Okay. So on the one on 108th and Blondo. All right. Well, all our faithful uh, followers, the fancy fans. one. Yes, the good, the the high end one. You know. Yep. It's, um, been there several times. It's a really great place to shop, and you're supporting a really good cause. So, come, go on down, say hi to Dahlia, 
and be sure and pick up something because what you buy does go for a really great cause and a really great charity. Yep, and they donate money to the Votech as well. Mm -hmm. So and a couple other charities too. So it's a really great company, and I'm really honored to be working for them. And it's, I'm pretty sure it's a red hair and lab coat free zone, so you don't have to worry about any red haired lab coat wearing hacks following you around, bothering you. Um, but anyway, next week we're going to be bringing you another great film. We're going to be bringing you the 1972 Exorcist ripoff, The Cold Beyond the Door, starring Juliet Mills. Now, this film deals with a young woman's. Um, rather dysfunctional life, her subsequent unplanned pregnancy, and her demonic possession, uh, and the attempts of her husband and uh, a Catholic priest friend to free her from the demon, and the, uh, all of the, all the happy hijinks therein. Uh, this movie was, came out shortly after The Exorcist did, and the whole purpose of this film was to capitalize on the fame of The Exorcist and try to jump on the gravy train and get some of that almighty dollar. You know, but the film was popular on the drive-in and the Great B schlock circuit. Um, it was a really great film. Check it out. We'll be bringing it to you next week. So, with that in mind, I'm Brother Jack Angry, along with the Black Dahlia here. Uh, saying good night, unpleasant dreams, and keep America on top, y'all. Watch horror hosts. Good night. Good night.